Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy, and on this channel, I'm documenting our family's journey moving from San Francisco to Malaysia. We recently came back from a two-week trip to Singapore and Malaysia, and oh man, it was so much fun. We spent five days in Singapore, four days in Kuala Lumpur, and three days in Penang. We went to so many different attractions, ate so much interesting and new foods, and met up with lots of friends who live in the area. We learned a lot from our experience, and most importantly, came to a few main conclusions. The big one I want to share today is why we decided that Malaysia is a better fit for us than Singapore. After I share the reasons, I would love to hear your feedback and recommendations, especially if you live in Malaysia or are familiar with Malaysia. First off, I want to say that we love Singapore. It's an amazing city. It is extremely clean, super safe, well organized, low traffic, and everything just works. However, because we're a family of four now, there are reasons why we feel like Malaysia is a better fit for us now. Of course, if you're somewhat in different circumstances, Singapore could be the perfect city for you. Reason number one, easier visa options. Malaysia has several visas that are targeted towards expats. They're fairly easy to get. The best one, in our opinion, is the digital nomad visa, which requires you to have a foreign income, whether as a freelancer or being uh, working remotely for a foreign company. That allows you to live for 12 months in the country with your family independence. There's also the MM2H visa, which is a longer term visa that does have requirements for a person purchasing a property and a higher amount of financial deposits. But it is practical if you want to live in Malaysia long term. Singapore, however, does not have a similar type of visa program. And the easiest one I found has fairly high financial requirements and require a lot more documentation. So in terms of getting a visa to live somewhere, Malaysia is much easier and accessible for us. Reason number two is cost of living, but more specifically, cost of housing. We already know that Singapore is one of the most expensive cities in the world. The most important thing for us is having an apartment or house that's comfortable for us. Being a family of four, we need something that's at least a three bedroom. So bedroom for us, bedroom for the kids, and a office slash guest bedroom for when people come to visit. We also want a building that has nice amenities like a swimming pool, a gym, entertainment spaces, maybe a tennis court and parking. That's something that we can find in Kuala Lumpur for between a thousand to two thousand dollars. And in Singapore, you're just not going to find anything within an affordable range of pricing. Reason number three is property investment. At some point, we would like to buy a property, whether it's for us to live in or to rent out for a rental income. In Singapore, that is just not realistic because for foreigners to buy property, you have to pay an extra 60% in taxes. In Malaysia, you do have financial requirements for foreigners. So for outside of Kuala Lumpur, you have to buy a property for at least 600,000 ringgit, which is roughly $150,000. And in Kuala Lumpur, it's a million ringgit or $250,000. And those are much more reasonable numbers for us in terms of buying a property. And in addition to that, in the future, we may have family that may want to move to Malaysia and it will be much more practical for them to buy something in Malaysia than Singapore. Reason number four is education and childcare. We have two kids that require full-time childcare. And in Kuala Lumpur, you can find childcare for under $500 per month for each kid. And then later on, when they're at school age, there are many, many international schools they can go to from the British school, American school, French school, German school, any number of international schools. Singapore also has international schools, but the pricing is much, much more expensive. In Kuala Lumpur, you can find international schools between five to $15,000 per year. And in Singapore, you're just not going to find that. And from what we've seen, both countries are fairly Chinese Mandarin friendly. That means we should be able to find good options for both our kids to learn Mandarin along with their regular education. Reason number five, car ownership. We live in the US and we have a car and we love having a car. We love to go on road trips to Lake Tahoe, to Yosemite, and to SoCal. Also, we drive up north to go visit my family in Oregon. Having a car just gives us that freedom and flexibility. In Singapore, it is extremely expensive to own a car. 
To own a car, you need a certificate of entitlement, which can cost tens of thousands of dollars, not to mention the cost of the car and the taxes for buying the car. In Malaysia, you don't have a certificate of entitlement. And also to buy a car, you can buy local brands like Pardua or Proton that are fairly affordable. On top of that, the cost of gasoline in Malaysia is very heavily subsidized. I think it was about 50 cents per liter of gas. And here in San Francisco, we have almost $7 per gallon. So driving is much easier and cheaper in Malaysia. In addition, the roads in Malaysia are actually very high quality. We took a graph from the airport to Kuala Lumpur and the roads were very wide, in great shape and well maintained. It actually reminded us of driving in the States and California. A nice bonus is most of the apartments we looked at in Kuala Lumpur offers free parking, so you don't have to pay attention to that. And here in San Francisco, we're paying almost $400 a month just on parking. Reason number six is local travel. Going hand in hand with having a car means being able to drive to places for fun. Malaysia just offers a lot more options for that. You can go from Kuala Lumpur to Penang in a few hours, to Ipoh, to Malacca, even to Johor Bahru and Singapore, all within driving distance. Singapore is a island nation, so there isn't a lot of places to go. And if you do want to go somewhere, you must most likely have to fly. And with two kids, that means buying four tickets, getting luggage, going through immigration. And that's just a lot of hassle that we don't have to deal with if we can just drive to local places. That brings me to reason number seven, which is access to nature. In Singapore, we went to Sentosa Island and went to the beach, but it was a man-made beach and quite expensive to be there. Whereas in Malaysia, you have all sorts of nature to explore, including national parks, rainforests, beaches, uh, and mountains. And having those options would be amazing for family trips we can get aways, and that's something we really look forward to. Reason number eight is work-life balance. From talking to our friends in Singapore, it seems like Singapore is a very work-focused culture. And it makes sense. It is a very productive economy, and you don't get there by not working hard. However, we want to live somewhere with a good work-life balance, where you do your work. However, you can go out afterwards for fun, you can go away for weekends, and you have plenty of time for family and friends. So it feels like Malaysia had that work-life balance. From talking to our friends in Malaysia, it, it seems like they have a much better work-life balance than our friends in Singapore. That leads me to reason number nine, which is social life. Singapore is very clean and very safe for a reason. It is very strict with all sorts of rules around what you can and cannot do. And that's nice for tourists, but I don't know if it's something I would be comfortable living under. And then our time in Malaysia felt a lot more relaxed, laid back. It was still safe, but it felt like you could more freely enjoy yourself. This is something I feel, but I'm not really sure about. So if you have experience living in Singapore versus Malaysia, please let me know in the comments. The last reason is business opportunities and growth. Singapore is a very well-developed country, which means that opportunities for development or growth may not be as plentiful. Whereas Malaysia, it is still a developing country and it looks like there's a ton of growth happening. There's buildings being built everywhere and there's news about foreign investments coming into the country all the time. It feels like the country has a lot of opportunities for growth, especially in the coming decade. And from what I've learned, it is much cheaper and easier to start a business in Malaysia compared to Singapore. And also, cost of labor is much cheaper if you plan on having employees. Because we see positive things for Malaysia in the coming years, we want to be there to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. So those are the 10 reasons for why we feel like Malaysia is a better fit for us as a family of four. What do you guys think? If you've lived in either country, please let me know your opinions in the comments. I would love to learn more about how life really is in both places. And now that we've decided on Malaysia, specifically Kuala Lumpur to move to, which neighborhoods should we live in? We've looked at KLCC, Mount Kiara, but we hear other places like Bangsar, Desert Park City are also great neighborhoods to live. I would love to hear your opinions and suggestions. I will be making follow-up videos about our trip to Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, and Penang. 
So look out for those. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe, like, and share this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.